Hi folks, welcome back to Juniper Validated Design. My name is Kevin Brown. In this session, I want to introduce our latest and most comprehensive JBD to date called Metro Ethernet Business Services. We're very excited about this profile covering over 20 use cases for the Metro. Now, before I get started, I want to share exactly where you can find the Juniper Validated Designs. We have multiple JVD tracks, which you can explore at the link below to the Juniper Design Center, including the JVD covered in today's session. Or you can scan the QR code here. Uh, on the Design Center, you'll find three document types. The Solution Overview provides a one to two page explanation of the JVD. The Test Report Brief summarizes the results of the validation. And the JVD document is going to provide a way deeper dive into the solution architecture. We also have a GitHub repository where you can go and find the configurations for all the given solutions. You can also head over to TechPost for a new blog series which will dissect the featured Metro JVD. In this series, I'll provide an in-depth breakdown of the solution architecture and then build the JVD step by step. The first blog is posted now, so stay tuned for more. So here's a snapshot of the key data points for the JVD I'll be covering today. By far, Metro EBS is our most comprehensive JVD to date, truly tackling complex challenges encountered in live networks. Our topologies leverage the Juniper WAN portfolio with about 26 devices in total, including MX304, PTX 10136MR, ACX7024, ACX7100s, and ACX7509. We executed over 1,400 test cases in the process of validating the solution architecture. As part of the solution, we include over 20 different use cases for delivering Metro Ethernet services, such as the two shown on the bottom right. The profile closely aligns with services and functionality defined by the Metro Ethernet form. As part of our post-mortem exercise, we always examine lessons learned and how we can continue to improve our solutions in the future, including development of new features. We'll explain these in details in the documentation as well. Now, JVD always starts with a reference architecture and a problem statement. What are we trying to address with a given solution? For the Metro Ethernet Business Services profile, we have three main topics we want to focus on. The first part of the problem statement comes in the form of the traditional network design. Here we have a common topology of access, aggregation, core, and services edge. Traffic flows are backhauled to a central aggregation point, creating this north to south traffic pattern. Fundamentally, this architecture is perfectly acceptable. It's designed with the necessary resiliency and sophisticated infrastructure to support the topology. The challenges start to emerge with the cloudification of the metro and the entrance of new edge compute and edge cloud complexes. We see enormous traffic growth within the metro. Transport costs go up and customer experience begins to suffer. The north to south architecture becomes unsustainable. We need a new design to accommodate the changing landscape. So we shift some of the advanced features and functionality closer to the subscriber introducing the Metro Edge Gateway component, which updates the simplistic aggregation platform on the left into a more cost-optimized, uh, high bandwidth and feature-rich platform on the right. This also enables shifting the edge compute complexes uh, closer to the subscriber, optimizing those east to west traffic flows while containing more growth within the Metro ecosystem. Multi-Services Edge still plays a critical role, so you're going to see this element heavily utilized in the JVD with MX304. The new topologies allow for continued expansion, evolving into even more sophisticated edge complexes. The second part of our reference architecture speaks to the modernization of the transport underlay and our ability to steer traffic through the network with or without a controller. Now, I like to talk about the network evolution as a journey where once upon a time, our networks were purpose-built, unidimensional infrastructures. Eventually, those networks evolved into the modern, converged, multi-dimensional architectures we have today. 
Now we come to more recent trends where the same physical infrastructure becomes capable of supporting multiple layers of abstraction. Here I'm talking about the network slicing journey, which can be realized in different levels of complexity and enforceability. For the JBD, we really wanted to take up a very practical approach, something that could be integrated into most networks deployed today. Our networks are expanding outwardly with scale-out, distributed architectures, and inwardly with virtualization and network slicing. The final piece to our reference architecture is the adoption of cloud principles and the need to seamlessly support both modern transport and services frameworks, coexisting and integrating with our traditional technologies. A foundation of Cloud Metro is the promise of X to anything connectivity models. In the JVD, we explore many of these challenges, synergizing legacy with next gen technologies and concepts like Metro Fabric and color aware traffic steering. We'll also look for ways to supercharge legacy services by infusing modern technologies. Here, I want to introduce our latest JVD for Metro Ethernet business services leveraging seamless segment routing with BGP classical transport. We include flexible algorithm with transport class tunnels to steer traffic through the network based on delay or traffic engineering metrics. Of course, flex algo isn't mandatory. We could use other transport protocols such as RSPP or our SRTE. The goal here is to enable service mapping onto color tunnel transport. At this point, we can use BGP classical transport to communicate color mapping across domains. We also include BGP labeled unicast for the traditional seamless MPLS use cases. This further allows us to create a failover behavior between color and uncolored paths. As a result, every service delivered in this profile includes options for both color aware and color agnostic path selection. The solution architecture is closely aligned with the Metro Ethernet Form 3.0 standards Every service is cross-referenced with MEF definitions and characteristics. So let's go into a few more details on building the topology. On the left, we have the Metro fabric consisting of multiple access leaf nodes, lean spine, and border leaf. Forwarding within the fabric is optimized to leverage the spine nodes to contain this traffic within that Metro ecosystem. The border leaf or MEG1 and MEG2 supports services aggregation and interconnectivity with edge computing complexes shown on the previous slide. As a scale up architecture, expansion at any level is very simple. So on the right side, we have a Metro multi ring topology enabled with multi instance ISIS. Each ring is assigned its own instance and area ID, controlling the blast radius while optimizing forwarding paths. Routes leaked between rings will be uh, tagged to prevent loops. So here we create two flex algo definitions, 128 for green and 129 for blue. Flex algo definitions are advertised only from select border nodes, which helps to optimize and prevent any conflicts. The transport classes associate bronze to blue paths and gold to green paths. We use custom resolution schemes to control how colored services will fail over. In this case, we want gold paths to fail over to bronze, and we want bronze paths to fail over to best effort. The color mapping is extended and communicated between rings with flex algo prefix leaking. Now, as we realize these distinct paths through the network, we can start mapping services onto colored or uncolored transport. Each flex algo includes unique shortest path computation. Delay metrics are used for the gold paths, traffic engineering metrics are used for bronze paths, and ITP metrics will be used for any uncolored paths. Finally, we enable BGP labeled unicast and BGP classical transport at the border routers. Color agnostic services will utilize the traditional seamless MPLS infrastructure. Color aware services will make use of BGP CT as our interdomain color stitching mechanism and includes the ability to fall back to uncolored paths if required. Now, from a services standpoint, our E-Line point-to-point -point services include EVPN, VPWS, and EVPN flexible cross-connect 
with different permutations of high availability, along with traditional services like L2 Circuit and L2 VPN. Loading SugaWire leverages eVPN virtual ESI with an Anycast SID. Next, we have our eLAN services for point to multipoint or multipoint to multipoint use cases. This includes eVPN eLAN with single and multi homing VLAN based and VLAN bundle services. Again, we include a couple use cases as well for traditional ELAN BGP VPLS services. Next up, we have eVPN eTree for rooted multipoint services with active active redundant root nodes. Then we have eAccess, which is a popular service supporting operator virtual connections or OBCs. We include a couple scenarios for transporting bulk EBCs and then demultiplexing those at the remote end. Finally, Layer 3 services comes in a few different forms. Traditional Layer 3 VPN with internet access, eVPN with Route Type 5, which allows advertising IP prefixes into the eVPN domain, and then we have eVPN with Anycast IRB or Virtual Gateway. Both eVPN services supporting Layer 2 and Layer 3 are further enhanced to support internet access. Altogether, over 20 use cases are covered by the JVD. As I mentioned earlier, all services include both color-aware and color-agnostic service mapping. Everything coexisting in perfect harmony, enabling simple migration paths to a color-aware services architecture. In the JVD, we include several options without dependency, allowing you to choose your own adventure with the solutions that make the most sense for your deployment. To inspire those conversations, we compartmentalize the JBD into three viable architectures with each one building upon the next. Solution one is more of a traditional seamless SRM PLS topology using BGP labeled unicast to stitch our regions and inter AS segments together. It includes all the services and topologies we've discussed so far with the only difference being there's no color aware traffic steering and no service mapping. Solution two enhances the design with light slicing the network, leveraging flex algo and transport classes. Flex algo prefix leaking allows extending those color aware services across IGP domains. In solution two, we'll intentionally contain color awareness to a single autonomous system rather than extending across ASNs. We'll also use the default resolution scheme so that all colored services will fail over to INET3 or best effort in the event a matching colored path is not available. If this part is not required. We could certainly leverage a more complex resolution scheme, but here we're just trying to simplify the solution at this point. Now, as we come to solution three, we'll introduce BGP classful transport as the mechanism for inter AS color aware traffic steering. At this point, all services are consistent, agreeing upon the same color constraints end to end. We'll also move to a more intentional resolution scheme by having gold services fail over to bronze and bronze services fail over to best effort. That's all for this session. I hope you found it valuable. Be sure to scan the QR codes for more information on the JVD discussed today and all other JVDs published so far. And of course, stay tuned for even more JVD content. Thank you very much.